idea of this album, Nightscapes, is based on the night, on the idea of different nightly landscapes. The night for me is a special time, not only because it is a special time for everyone, because I am someone who also dreams really a lot every night and uh, very intensely, sometimes uh, disturbingly, but um, yeah, of course, also very often very beautiful dreams. And um, I think the night is a special time for all human beings because everything becomes much more, through this darkness, everything becomes much more intimate. Everything becomes a bit more interior. And um, as such, maybe it's, it's also a very good time for music, which is also why many people go dancing at night, uh, enjoy music more at night. And that's the other part of this album. It's not only about the, let's say, very, very melancholic, very romantic uh, pieces, the very romantic idea of night. Of course, it, it plays a central part, but it's also about this other activity that you do mostly at night, which is dancing. Um, of course, I didn't choose any dances. I chose um, dances that are very nightly. And of course, it is all connected through Chopin because Chopin is the, the main composer that um, yeah, made the nocturne what it is now. And uh, of course, also the waltzes um, are very much a thing of Chopin. So maybe he was the idea, he was the, the glue that holds everything together. But Going from that, once we had this idea, or I, ha I had this idea, um, many more impressions of night came to me, and I thought this, maybe this, um, yeah, this nocturne over the ages uh, uh, would be a nice connection. And then I found some other nightscapes, <laughs> which are, I think, incredibly beautiful on the harp. Um, two Italian ones, uh, one by Respighi, a notturno, and a sogno, a dream, uh, by Pizzetti, who no one knows, <laughs> but it's a beautiful little piece, a beautiful miniature. Um, they both have in common, uh, and they're written very, very uh, close to each other in, in the span of a few years at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and they both have in common that it's it's these beautiful melodies on top of a rhythm that is, in the case of Pizzetti, sometimes even slightly confusing, which is also something dreamlike. I mean, when, when you dream, sometimes you just lose yourself or you don't know what's going on. Or even more confusingly, you know that you're dreaming, which is, <laughs> I think it doesn't help sometimes. It's actually quite, it can be torture that you know you're dreaming, but you can't get out of it. But in this case, it's a, it's a very beautiful, very, very... Uh, Yes, very intimate, very beautiful dream, very Italian to me. Field, many people maybe don't know, but maybe we should, <laughs> because he was the inventor, he was Irish, and he was the inventor of this genre nocturne, which we then came to know through Chopin's interpretation of it. But Chopin himself was very much inspired by this um, musician. He was a great pianist, composer. He then emigrated to Russia and became the founder almost of, of the Russian piano school. He wrote this collection of, of nocturnes that are still very much, the, the character is already very much there. I, th I feel like they are very similar in many ways to what Chopin later did, but they are like small jewels, like small miniatures. They are much less elaborate, but um, they have already this beautiful freedom of ornamentation, of, of long singing lines, of very simple elements sometimes that have an incredible effect. Of course, Chopin did elaborate that and then made, yeah, made it into something even more, maybe also a bit darker sometimes. In the case of Field, they're maybe not so disturbing yet. Some of the of Chopin's nocturnes can be, even though they are simple, very like they, they can make you cry immediately or, or your heart feels like it's being ripped apart. This maybe doesn't happen so much in, in Fields Nocturnes because they are more placid, but in a very beautiful way. They have 
beautiful long lines of melodies um, accompanied by very undulating, I think that is a word, <laughs> undulating rhythms. And I know this is something that is actually maybe not thought to be the strength of the harp because we're not a melody instrument. Uh, and it is very, very difficult sometimes to work on these things. It's, it's a, a process that never ends. I mean, I spend so much time just thinking, no, this just one note, I didn't get it exactly right. And then it, the, the line is interrupted. Or um, I do get the, the feeling of the phrase that I want to make, but because still in the end, when you listen to a recording, you're not satisfied because every single note is just vertical and it just drops and you don't manage to get this horizontal line. But I told myself, because of course many of those pieces are written for the piano actually, it's this is the same problem on the piano. So this problem I didn't create on the harp, it's a problem that already exists on the piece, on the instrument that these pieces were written for. Um, and it's the challenge of, of that instrument and also the beauty, because if you do manage to create a line on an instrument that is actually not capable of doing a legato, <laughs> then it's it's magic. It was very difficult to adapt some of those pieces, many of those pieces that I chose for this album Nightscapes. But there was always a reason and it wasn't necessarily that I think all of them are better on my instrument than on the piano. I think sometimes it helps that we don't have a hammer that produces the sound, but our hands directly create the sound. And I also think that the quality of sound which is on the hub in a certain way so irresistible because it can go directly to your soul and directly through your body. It's very physical. I think this can help in many of these pieces. But in the end, it's just another approach. It's just a different color and maybe a different way in into some of these pieces for some listeners. Maybe some of them gain something. Maybe someone will think that some of them also lose something. But I think all have their own reason and right to become what they became and uh, the rest is really up to the listener. I know what vision I had and how much I succeeded in making it come true and the rest is up to you.